What's up guys, today we're gonna do some product research. So I'm just gonna dig into my computer, start looking at products, uh, show you techniques that I use to find real winning products, and essentially just get a peek into how I do this process myself. Uh, no script, no nothing, just me finding winning products uh, and trying to give you guys as much insight of my thinking about it as possible. So if you wanna learn from a guy that's been selling for over three years now, had 30 plus products on Amazon, and has done seven figures on Amazon, this is a perfect video for you. Uh, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below so you guys make sure you see all videos like this and get to see my journey in the Amazon FBA space. Otherwise guys, let's just get right into it. All right, so today I'm gonna to use Helium 10 to do some product research. Uh, the techniques I'm gonna use, you can use for Viral Launch, Jungle Scout, doesn't matter. I switch back from Helium 10 to Viral Launch if you know me. Uh, it's just something I do, I get creative. I, I like some aspects of Viral Launch, some aspects of Helium 10. But don't worry, don't go buy some new software if you guys don't need it. But if you do want Helium 10, I do have a link down in the description below. Go ahead and use that and you'll get 50% off your first month. Otherwise, let's just get right into it. So today we're gonna to be using Blackbox for Amazon product research in Helium 10. And we're gonna use the Keywords tab. So the cool thing about this Keywords tab is instead of just seeing you know pictures of products uh, and just you know sorting through in, in a product sense, we're actually going to be looking for keywords. People are actually searching on Amazon, you know, long tail, you know, three to seven, you know, words in a row uh, that people are searching to find products on Amazon. This is cool because one, it shows real demand for products on Amazon. People are actually searching this in month by month. And also you can even find keywords that have, you know, products that aren't there or don't exist for that keyword. So you can find open markets, uh, that people are actually searching on Amazon but no products appear or there's just not the right product in that space that you can go ahead and fill that gap for them. This right now is actually probably my favorite way to do product research. The first thing we need to find out is you know what kind of you know search volume are we looking for for this product, you know, for the keyword I should say. So, you know, do we want 5,000 searches a month, 10,000 searches a month, 15,000 searches a month? This varies of, of what the revenue actually brings in from that many searches. Uh, so, you know, I usually bring it in from like 2,000 to 6,000, somewhere in that range. Uh, for this example, let's do, just to kind of, you know, get ideas churning and everything like that, let's do 2,000 to uh, 12,000 right here. So play around with this, guys. Obviously, you know, the lower you go, uh, the less revenue most likely that product is getting from that keyword. Uh, the higher you go, uh, same thing, but there's probably more competition for that keyword. So play around with this. Uh, 1,000, 2,000 is probably the lowest I would go unless you're doing something that you know is more specific. And then 12,000, you can do this from 6,000, 12,000, uh, 20,000. You can have no max on this to kind of you know make sure the horizons are uh, pretty much endless and, and you can sift through low volume products and high volume products and kind of uh, get into that mindset. And for the max, you could do you know 6,000, 12,000, uh, 20,000 if you don't mind digging through more results and you wanna make sure that you're getting as many options to look through as possible, uh, then you could go ahead and do that. Uh, monthly revenue, so I go back and forth on this. That really depends on your budget, so you should reverse engineer this uh, based on your budget. So if you have a smaller budget, then we should look for smaller monthly revenues. If you have a larger budget and wanna be more aggressive, then obviously you could go for you know higher revenue products. And I know that's kind of vague uh, just because you know you don't know what kind of numbers apply to what, uh, but you know, for someone with a standard budget, you know, somewhere between you know three thousand and fifteen thousand is probably a good range for you. And something I suggest for anybody starting, just because even if you have a higher budget, I still suggest you start a little lower, just because if you go somewhere a lot higher in revenue, the competition is going to be a lot more fierce, and it's just you know the learning curve is too steep uh, to kind of get going on it. So for this example, let's do four thousand to twelve thousand a month. So if you guys want to think of this in terms of profit and kind of what your business goals are, uh, you can, you know, just take 30, 40% margins, you know, based on this. So what, 30, 40% margins of 4,000 uh, is probably within that, what, 1,500 range. Uh, don't judge my math there. Uh, just kind of top of the head here. Uh, 12,000, uh, it's probably around that 4,000, 5,000 a month range. Again, you know, margins can be 35 40%, somewhere between 30 and 50% is kind of your target market of what you're looking for. Anything lower than that, you're kind of, I maybe need a little more work uh, for your product research and, and picking a better product or getting a better supplier or anything like that. But think of it in terms like that if you like to you know, associate money to this product. Again, there's gonna be a buildup period where maybe your margins are lower until you get reviews just because you have like, the lower price or you're spending more on advertising. 
but obviously something you're going to try to achieve. And once you get like more stable uh, and everything like that, uh, something that's very, very realistic. Next here is price. So a lot of people will tell you don't go under 15 or 12 or 13. Uh, I like, you know, 12 or 13. Let's do 13 for this one right here. Uh, for max, let's do 50. You know, going lower than this is okay. Just know your profit margin is probably being a little less and probably something you're gonna do a little higher volume of to make up for that. So I have a product at 789 and we do just, you know, a ton of volume for that that kind of makes up with that. And it sits around about 20, 25% margin instead of that, you know, ideal 30 to 50% margin. So it's something we just do a lot of volume of and make up for that in that sense. And that's obviously because of the fixed fees at a lower price. Obviously, you know, a fixed fee of $4 is eating into that margin a lot more than a $16 product or a $20 product. For the higher side, I go 50, uh, you know, just because a lot of people don't have a huge budget to start out with. And when you go to a $50 product, $60 product, $70 product, that first order is going to be very, very expensive just because that'll be a much more premium product, obviously. But, you know, I have no problem selling $80, $90 products on Amazon if the opportunity is there. You just have to have the capital to back that up. A review count here, obviously minimum, we could just leave blank. Zero is fine for that. Uh, max, you know, I, I like to do like, you know, 172, something kind of random. I'm kind of in between that 100 to 200 uh, review range for what I'm looking for, for a max for my product. So 172, just something kind of random too. You know, if I stop at 150, I have kind of 22 more spots there to potentially find a product that no one else is finding. Uh, so 172 is good right there. Again, play around with this. Could be 200, 250, 150, 100. Uh, obviously, you know, the more reviews, the more competitive it will be. But 172 is something very realistic for any, you know, niche or any revenue amount uh, for competition. Review rating here, we can leave this blank. Uh, if you want to mess with this, this is okay. So max, maybe you do 4.2, 3.7. If you're looking for, you know, low quality products that you can improve on in that niche to kind of get a leg up on the competition. You know, this depends on you. Obviously you have to put a lot more work into that field uh, to work with the manufacturer, get that product fixed and making sure you're getting that best design to get four or five star reviews. So it's usually a little more work with the manufacturer when you do it this way. But I always like to think, you know, people are lazy. Uh, if it seems like a lot of work, they're not gonna wanna do it. Uh, so there's probably less competition in that field uh, and it's a little more of a blue ocean. So sometimes when I see that product that requires a little extra work, I, I get excited. I get a little tick of dopamine and I'm like, you know, I know no one else is gonna put that work into this product. Uh, so I'm gonna have a blue ocean here uh, to sell in. So make sure you guys think about that for an avenue. Again, you know, product research, uh, it's all about the angle you have for that product, especially when there's other competition in that field already. So you have to have an angle. Uh, so get your competitive advantage, figure that out for your product when you find it. Let's keep going here though. Word count. So again, we're looking at keywords here, not products. So what is the word count here? Two is good, three is good for minimum. You know, one is very vague, obviously. Uh, any products described with one word, obviously gonna be very competitive and the you know search volume is gonna be huge. Two, it's, it's kind of in that middle range. You can play with two. Uh, I personally like three right now. Again, you can play around with this. Uh, max, I don't really care about max. You can put seven, eight here. Don't doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, if it's getting you know five thousand searches a month at eight words, I don't care. <laughs> that's okay with me. So that's my thought on that one. Uh, next here is categories. So we have to select the categories we want. I uh, like arts, craft, sewing. Uh, baby's okay. Let's keep going down here. Uh, you can do cell phone accessories just for the accessories. Uh, camera and photo, let's keep going down. Uh, health and households, okay. Home and kitchen, industrial scientific, kitchen and dining, uh, office products, patio, lawn and garden, pet supplies, uh, sports and outdoors, there's a lot of clothes right now. Tools and home improvement right here. Toys and games, a lot of people like this category. I really don't, so this one's up to you. Again, play around with these uh, to the best of your ability and get creative. Uh, you know, product research is all about being creative and finding products that no one else is finding. Uh, so just play around with these. Again, here, this is uh, advanced filters. So you can, you know, exclude keywords, variation count, number of sellers, competing products right here, shipping size tier, we can play around with this, small, large, uh, small, medium, large, oversized, special oversized. So maybe, you know, small, large, uh, small, uh, medium, but you don't wanna do anything huge. So let's get rid of large and special oversized just because we know we'd never do this. But otherwise we wanna be, you know, flexible uh, for something like this. Uh, so you play around with this if you like, 
but right now these filters are good for me. So let's hit search right here. All right, guys, so we can see that our keywords have populated here. And again, these aren't products, right? This is a keyword that people are searching on Amazon. And then now we're looking at the products underneath this keyword that come up. For one, define product ideas, right? Products that we can actually improve upon or aren't that competitive. Or two, for keywords that, you know, there's aren't proper products underneath that keyword uh, that people are actually looking for, but it just doesn't exist that we can kind of fill the void with. So we can see here water pipes for smoking. It gets 5,700 searches per month. Uh, average price 28.2, monthly sales 177, monthly revenue 4,200. Uh, and all that good stuff right here. Uh, you know, water pipes for smoking, just to hit on a point real quick, uh, anything that, you know, is for smoking or tobacco, anything like that, is kind of a gray area on Amazon. Uh, so I want nothing to do with this. Uh, it's just a quick trick that I like to do here is I like to go to page 10 right away, uh, just because people do research. Uh, they go, you know, page three, four, uh, maybe they quit just because they get lazy, right? We're all lazy. And so let's just skip all those people that were looking at those products and just go to page 10 right away. Again, if I keep saying this, uh, everybody's gonna go to page 10. Uh, so maybe get creative with this, maybe go to page 20, uh, seven, uh, 62, uh, whatever you want here. But right now, let's just go find a bunch of products and then I'm gonna go over each one of them. Uh, so the first one here, I see palm leaf plates. Uh, that sounds super interesting. Uh, I'm gonna hit view on Amazon here, open up a new tab. So guys, I'm gonna go rapid fire here. Uh, you know, this, this is how I do it. So, you know, I, I open a bunch of tabs up for products that seem interesting, you know, just based on, you know, my, what I'm thinking, uh, you know, maybe I can't explain it, but subconsciously things that look interesting. And then I go through each product and kind of go through that of what I like, what I don't like. That way you guys can kind of get inside my brain uh, and get ideas of your own of how to do this, you know, back in your office or, you know, back in your uh, dorm room, whatever you're doing this at, uh, that way you guys can, you know, go ahead and get some ideas flowing. Uh, egg baskets for fresh eggs, uh, that is very interesting. Uh, view on Amazon, White Claw Tapestry. Uh, I just, this is all curiosity right here. I gotta take a look at that. Gold shelf brackets, glass vases for flowers, rose teddy bear, amber mason jars, Beauty and Beast Rose, uh, Square D 30 amp two pole breaker, no thank you. Farmhouse paper towel holder, uh, that is super interesting and seems easy to source. Uh, cow pictures, wall decor, canvas. Uh, why not? I, I just want to see those canvases. Uh, so you see, uh, page 10 is doing us well here. I already got five ideas, but let's go through that. Five ideas is plenty. So we have palm leaf plates here. Uh, so, you know, very similar to bamboo. I'm not sure the difference here. And so we'd have to do some digging on that. What makes it a palm leaf plate uh, versus, you know, bamboo and, and why maybe this is better. Uh, but you know how big bamboo became. So maybe this is the next big thing. We go to Helium 10 here, go to X-Ray. All right, so we got that loaded here. Uh, we see price points here, pretty high, 28, 12, 22. Uh, we see revenue, 6,000, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 14,000. Uh, let's look at the reviews here. So we got 178, 47, 32, 203, 695, 58, 566. So a, a few guys doing uh, quite a few reviews here. Uh, but you know this guy at 58 is doing you know about 4,000, uh, 178 is at 6,000. So there is some room here uh, to kind of get into the market. Uh, this little graph here is this BSR. Uh, this goes up and down and up and down. I kind of want to see what that's all about. Uh, I want to see steady graphs, right? I want to see uh, right here might mean they went out of stock right here. Uh, so maybe that went up there. But if we dig into this and we, we click on it, uh, we can actually see this with Helium 10 uh, and dig a little deeper uh, of what's going on with that sales graph. So we hit all time here and we can see it kind of went out of stock here. Uh, then it got back into stock right here. Uh, so this is just sales ranking if you guys don't know what this is. And we can see all the way from when they started. And you know, the lower the sales rank, the better the sales are. So uh, you can assume right here they went out of stock, kind of stocking back in. Uh, sales kind of improved here. So that means they've got more steady, they got more inventory in. Uh, you know, just kind of fluctuating right here. Same thing right here. It looks like they went out of stock for a long time. Uh, then they got more consistent, out of stock again, more consistent, just a, a quick overview of how that kind of works and my thinking on it. That way you guys know exactly what you're looking at. Well, right now we're just looking at uh, leaf palm, leaf plates disposable. So they're disposable, that's good. They're gonna come back and buy more if they like it. Uh, bamboo plates, uh, 10 inches by seven inches, uh, 48 piece here, uh, 27.99, it's a great price point. Uh, I love how they're disposable. I haven't seen something like this in a long time. Uh, that's awesome. 
uh, good photos here. So uh, these guys know what they're doing here. Something to take into account. If we go back down, let's just keep looking. Uh, so we have, you know, different, you know, sets, 75 pieces, nine, six, four inches, uh, 25 pack, 10 inch here. Uh, these ones uh, actually shaped like palm leaves. I, I really do like that. Uh, and I think that's a really cool idea. It kind of fits the theme of these, but you guys can get the drift here. So something to take into account, uh, we just got to figure out, you know, how to be different here or at least, you know, get in at the right time. So uh, this is kind of a, a mixture right here. So say, you know, these guys had 300 reviews, say these guys had 400 reviews, uh, but we really wanted to take advantage of this opportunity and, and dig in. We'd really have to focus since there's so many established sellers uh, on being different of, of how to be uh, unique, how to be premium, how to be here for the long run. Even if, you know, same sellers come in with uh, very similar products to you, how do you stick out? How do you stand out? How do you stay here for the long run and not just get priced out or just, you know, flooded with competition? Uh, for this one, it, it seems like a newer market and it's something that you could just kind of rush to market to, get familiar with it. Uh, maybe, you know, do some more deep digging onto it, find some holes in the market and expand that way. Uh, so, you know, again, these are, this is what my brain's doing right now. Uh, it's just like, okay, you know, do we, do we rush to market? Do we be different? How do we, what are the holes here? So the holes might be, uh, you know, you know, forks and knives. There's no spoon here. Uh, are they palm leaves? Are they disposable? Are they biodegradable? Uh, all that good stuff. You know, what colors are selling well? You know, is it the darker one? Is it the lighter one? Uh, is the palm leaf shaped one selling better? Uh, you know, how, how do we do this? And so what I do here, because I, 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 I personally like this market here. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I didn't like how, uh, you know, the top guy here we looked at. Uh, they had a good, they had a good listing. They seem like a good brand. Uh, but they're still at 178 here. So that competition is going to be fixed there for a while, I believe. But something I would look into more of these and kind of see what the overall market looks like. And put this keyword, you know, on an Excel sheet to come back later to. Maybe you have five to ten different ideas. I like to bulk ideas that way. I have a huge list. Uh, and, you know, just in case I strike out with the first one, I have nine others, you know, I can go back to and look for just because the product research sucks, right? Like, this is hard. And so we want to make sure that we get all our ideas in one place and we have backups. That way we're not just going all in on one and then busting. That's just going to, it's not good for your mental and it's not going to encourage you to come back and do this over again and really dig deep. So I like to get, you know, five to 10 ideas that way, you know, if the first one sucks that I thought was good, at least I have five to 10 others to start to, you know, look into and everything like that. So the next step here, I would track this uh, palm leaf plates, do some more research, kind of look at reviews, uh, look at all the, you know, the listings, but most importantly, I would go in and find other keywords that people are typing in to search this product to see, you know, are there any holes? Maybe people are typing in 10 pack, 20 pack, 30 pack. Maybe people are typing in uh, something else that's kind of unique. So you can type this into a keyword research tool and get all relative keywords with it. See what the search volume is and start digging on the market as a whole. This is where it gets really interesting. And this is where you can kind of get into the mind as a consumer and figure out, you know, what people are looking for and where the holes really are for you to fill and take advantage of. So I hope that's making sense, guys. I know you guys are smart. Uh, I'm, I'm, I almost guarantee you guys are following along. If not, hit those comments down below. If you're enjoying this so far, just poke that like button. Just kind of poke it for me and get this video to more people. Otherwise, let's get to a few more product ideas. And that way you guys can see multiple examples, which uh, you probably know that you know, no niche is the same and every niche will have a different angle uh, and different consumers. And so the more examples, the better. So egg baskets for fresh eggs, uh, very generic here. Uh, 601 for reviews, that's quite a bit. 311 here, 169, 217. So you can see here there's different designs though. That's really cool. And that creates a market of its own. You know, people are gonna be window shopping. You know, do they want the chicken? Uh, do they want the round one? Do they want the uh, the the loop the loop or whatever you want to call it right there? Uh, uh, and you can see here we got more, we got generic ones right here as well. And so we can look at sales real quick. So we load the sales up. We see the first one doing about 12,000, 5,000 for the second one, 2,000, 2,000, about 3,000 there, 2,000, 27 there uh, for this one. The spiral one, the loop to loop uh, is doing pretty well here, guys. Uh, review ratings, fives, 4.5s. Review count, 601. Uh, that top guy is, is kind of dominating here. Uh, 311, 169, 217. 25 here so you know 217 for 3,000 or you know about 2400 here for revenue is, is kind of scary for me I don't want to do uh, this design here uh, you know this market itself again going back to every niche is different 
Uh, so just mimic, you know, obviously don't copy, copy, but just mimic the guys that are doing well. There's no need to reinvent the wheel here, guys. You know, especially with your first product, you know, get sales, get revenue, get profit, and then you can be creative. Maybe you start two or three different, you know, chicken egg baskets and you see which one sticks and you expand your, your line and your brand that way. And so that's just something to take into account that you don't need to reinvent the wheel at first. Make your money, make your dime, make your profit, and then you can get creative as you want, but you need a real business first and, and a real profit and real cash flow. Uh, 27,000, like in the spiral one, it's pretty cool. Uh, make sure that one uh, you know, doesn't have a patent or anything like that, because uh, it's pretty unique. Uh, let's see, 2,000, 4,000 here. So this one is what I call kind of a window shopping product. It's kind of in between, but what I mean by that is that people are gonna search this term right here, egg baskets for fresh eggs, and you know, like a lemon squeezer or a garlic press, they're probably just gonna buy the first one that pops up just because uh, they all look the same. That one has the most reviews. That one is the best price, everything like that. So they're just gonna buy the first one. But this one here, we scroll down and we see four different designs off the bat. You know, eight different designs now, you know, 12 different designs. So people are gonna, you know, search this and just, you know, look around, window shop, uh, and kind of figure out, you know, which, you know, kind of design fits their fancy or whatever you wanna call it. And so this is why, you know, this is kind of risky, but also opportunity uh, kind of based as well. So what I mean by that is it's risky because you can put up a design that no one likes on here, uh, but it's, it's, you know, opportunistic because that people are window shopping here, that if you find a good design, there's always gonna be an opportunity no matter how many reviews here. I don't care if people are, you know, window shopping looking for good designs, I don't care how many reviews the top guy has. If this one catches their eye and they like this one way better, even with one star less, they're buying this one if they hate this design and it's for something that's you know a rustic look in their house or a farmhouse look uh, in their home, then they're gonna buy the one that they like the most. So keep that in mind when you're doing uh, you know window shopping products, how I like to call them, uh, trademarked by Cameron James. Don't take that, uh, just kidding there. But let's go on to the next one, guys. Here we got White Claw Tapestry. I don't know what that means. Uh, oh my gosh, it's exactly what uh, it kind of sounds like here. Uh, ain't no laws with white claws. Uh, welcome to the, you know, bad word here that I probably shouldn't say on YouTube. I ain't no laws when you're drinking claws. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you got this right here. I'm not sure if these are trademarked or if you need licensing to actually do these. Uh, but this is interesting because, you know, white claws have kind of taken the country by storm. Uh, you know, those delicious little white seltzers with very low calories. I enjoy them from time to time. Uh, we can look at sales here, 28,000, 46,000. Uh, again, this is something I probably wouldn't get into just because it's a little more risky, uh, not as sustainable. You know, in two years, there's gonna be another version of White Claw or a different alcoholic beverage kind of taking the scene. Uh, but if this is kind of your fit, uh, go for it. If you love White Claws and you have a whole frat house to kind of advertise to, that is a good fit for you. But me personally, I don't like trendy products like this. Uh, so let's go on to the next one here. Uh, farmhouse paper towel holder. So we go down here again, different design. So a little bit of a window shopping product here. Uh, we can see 234, 248, 331, 460 here. Uh, we go down, there's, you know, I don't know, sure if that's farmhouse or not. Uh, vintage paper towel holder, rustic industrial pipe. Uh, so we get some cool designs here, guys. Again, this is great for a creative mind or someone who's on Pinterest a lot or Instagram that sees trending designs that aren't quite on Amazon yet or haven't really caught up uh, in the space yet. So if this is stuff you see every day on Pinterest or you know Instagram or wherever you might be, and you go on Amazon and it's not here, and you know there's a hundred likes for it, a thousand likes for it, it's trending, whatever. Maybe this is a good opportunity for you. Uh, but that's one thing I have to say again is that do not reinvent the wheel here. Make sure you're proving that the product actually works, whether that's with sales uh, from a previous product on Amazon or if it's like you know trending on Instagram or Pinterest. You just don't want to put up a product blindly unless you have a big budget and you're gonna start you know, five, 10 different designs at once. Uh, so something to keep in mind there, guys. Uh, revenue, 7,000, 10,000, 6,000, 6,000, uh, 1,000, 59,000, geez. Uh, that's just a generic uh, paper towel guy. 217 right here, uh, kind of generic as well. I do like this, you know, I know these don't cost much. Uh, $40 for this guy, $17.33. Uh, so this is kind of cool. We see the $40 one right here, 248. A Colonial Tin, I'm not sure if that's a brand or not. Uh, we can dig deep into that, but uh, the first thing I see, there's one photo uh, and there's no bullets. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of funny. It's very, uh, it's trending right now. It's, it's doing very well uh, in sales. 
Uh, but if this isn't patented or branded or anything like that, and the sales are actually coming from that keyword, this is a fantastic opportunity right here. So something that's doing about 10, 11,000, uh, Forty dollars. You got to believe the margins uh, ridiculous, about fifty percent there, uh, if not higher. Um, you know, obviously you have to do some more research there. So next, guys, we got cow pictures, wall decor, canvas. So uh, we got some cool photos of cows here, uh, right here and right here. Uh, I love that one. That's awesome. But uh, one thing, just top of my head, I'm thinking about is how hard are these to manufacture? Does it take an artist? Does it take uh, you know, special care to put a canvas together? Is it just print and just repeat? Are they that good at it? Uh, so something I would kind of dig deeper into uh, in manufacturing and uh, Alibaba, uh, talking to some people before I, I really dove into this, but something that's that's very interesting. Again, a uh, window shopping product here again, guys. And so the opportunities are endless. We go to sales here real quick, 6,000, 5,000, 5,000, 4,000, 3,000. Uh, it gets a little low pretty quickly here. Let's go to these ones, uh, the cow one, 8,000, that's pretty good. Uh, cute cow wall art, 15,000. So I'm guessing this isn't the best keyword uh, to search this because, you know, just based on the fact that if these guys are at spot 11, 12, and they're doing 8,000, 15,000, the best in the whole market, there's other keywords with higher volume, uh, you know, pulling these searches at one and two right here. Uh, to get the most sales out of all of them. So something to take into account, you'll have to do some more research. Again, you know, cow pictures, wall decor, canvas, you can, you can assume that this isn't the best keyword for this. It's kind of weird, uh, but you know, again, it's just kind of a way to generate ideas uh, and get going there. If you're creative, this would be an awesome field to get into uh, just because you can put out a bunch of designs, uh, maybe start with low MOQs uh, to, to get into, but uh, it does look a little, I wouldn't say saturated just because there's so many ones with lower reviews, but uh, there are a lot of designs out there. Uh, so this is one that it's not quite my favorite, even though I love cows. So that was the last idea, guys. So let's talk about next steps here. So like I said, get these keywords on an Excel sheet, get these products on an Excel sheet, uh, start looking deeper into them, taking notes, uh, looking at other keywords that uh, call these uh, these products and you know digging deeper on those to see if there's any holes you're missing in the market which products in each category is selling the best you know like is it the 10 pack 20 pack 50 pack is it the the cow with the colors is it you know the egg basket with the spirals or the loop to loop and, and kind of figuring out these products and getting a little deeper into the market research of these this is really going to help you generate ideas of of figuring out the holes in the market and your in your angle right so you know the spiral loop to loop maybe no one else is doing that and they have no other colors so maybe you do different colors maybe you do a bigger loop to loop uh, maybe people are searching uh, 50 pack on the the palm leaf plates which was super interesting i, I didn't even know those existed uh, so that was really cool to find them on this video just off the whim uh, but you know maybe the 50 packs are going or maybe the coultery kits I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, uh, but people are searching that with the, the plates or maybe the palm leaf ones, maybe you can do different designs, uh, anything like that. So that's why you have to deep dive into these and immerse yourself into it a little bit. That's why you do five to 10. That way there's, if there's bust, there's bust, you just move on to the next one and you really figure out your angle uh, and you know the unique situation you're gonna put yourself in uh, for a product and that way you're minimizing your chance of failure and you know increase the odds of you having that first winner uh, for your first product or your second product or your third product. But I hope that guys was super helpful. Again, product research videos, I feel like uh, it's all about creativity. It's all about just getting inside my head, someone who's had uh, you know, quite a few successful products. Uh, that way you can kind of figure out you know, what's good, what's bad uh, and everything like that and figure out ways to find that perfect product for you. One more thing before you leave, make sure you go check out my Instagram, CameronJames.co. The link will be in the description below. I'm starting to post more behind the scenes uh, information and business and all my good stuff uh, for my Amazon FBA business back there uh, in the stories, IGTVs. Uh, I'm ramping that up as we speak right now. So make sure you go check that out there. Send me a DM if you have questions or you know just want to say, hey, uh, anything like that. Otherwise, guys, check out my other videos on product research uh, on my YouTube channel and get ideas flowing there as well. All right, guys, that is it. We'll see you on the next one.